we start with a couple of topics where trust is essential. And uh, one uh, domain where I worked in the past uh, is automated driving, and that is crucial because that's one of the first systems that we can see uh, on the roads in public where potentially non so um, expert users, so to say consumers and novice users, use a new technology uh, in the wild, so to say. And what we can see uh, with that experience is there are indeed problems that have occurred. So we can see here, for example, a person driving with the Tesla autopilot for the first time, and what happens very soon is this person gets very excited uh, and does what uh, what is what is ourselves all told is automated driving about. Uh, no, no more need for driving, just do what you want to do so this person starts eating a sandwich. However, the current systems like this Tesla autopilot, they would not allow that behavior. So actually you would have to monitor and control the systems and be alert all the time. And to, uh, to, to satisfy the constraints, uh, the manufacturers built in some safety technologies, for example, a hands-on wheel detection, uh, so that it's always guaranteed there is some uh, driver uh, behind the wheel. But introducing automation into society always have some effects. And we can see, for example, here that the users started to, to trick that autopilot um, because it's working so good, so they just thought, I put an orange into the steering wheel, make the vehicle feel like I'm handing the, the steering wheel in my hands, and so I can use this technology for a longer time uh, without uh, being alert. And what, what happens then in these cases is, yeah, people not monitoring the vehicles, having minor crashes, and we also had some deadly crashes already, and uh, the National Transport Safety Board of the United States of America um, confirmed uh, by investigation in these cases that overtrust in the systems were one contributing cause uh, to those accidents. So automated driving is one comparably extreme case where people and technology operate in a safety critical environment and trust plays an important role here. So let's talk a little bit about what trust actually is. There are many definitions outside the one that I personally use uh, most of the time is the one uh, by Lee and C, and they define trust in automation as the attitude that an agent will help achieve an individual's goals in a situation characterized by uncertainty and vulnerability. So the uncertainty and the vulnerability is an important part of the trust in automation or potentially also trust in the AI concept, but we will discuss that later on. Uh, and they further state that trust is the uh, built on the possibility to observe a system's behavior, understand its intended use, and also understands how it makes decisions. And why is that important? So what we try to achieve with our research is called a calibration of trust. And this means that we somehow have to trust our systems in a way that we always know uh, if it will succeed in a particular situation or not. So what are the extremes of the trust spectrum? On the one hand, we may have distrust. So we do not trust the system sufficiently, although it would be able uh, to perform, um, perf perform successfully in a particular situation. On the other hand, we have the overtrust situation, meaning that a user might put more trust in the system as it actually is capable of doing. And we want to prevent both distrust and overtrust situation. We want to achieve appropriate trust so that the trust of a user in a system is always matching its capabilities. And this process is called the trust calibrations. So we wanna use some interventions like HMI designs or um, speech, whatever we can use to calibrate the trust of a user to raise and lower it to appropriate levels. But that's not so easy at all because a trust is a multi-dimensional concept. So we are, have revealed many dimensions in the past uh, this is from a work by Hoff and Bashir, and they say there are dispositional trust, uh, trust factors. Those are the traits, the characteristics of the user that come into play before even an interaction starts. Then we have situational trust. There is some variability of the environment, different driving situation, but also operator characteristics that change. What is my workload? Uh, what is my current mood of the day, for example? Uh, we also have some initially learned trust when we interact with the system for the first time, we still have some knowledge about previous systems or similar systems we have interacted with and that also influences how much we trust it. And then finally, there is this dynamically learned trust 
So when we interact with the system, uh, we see how it works in the wild and we update our trust and it emerges from, from these interactions. So how can we calibrate trust? There are different uh, technologies and techniques available. So in automated driving, one thing that is frequently uh, proposed is having more transparency telling the user what a vehicle is doing. For example, we have on the left a small robot on the dashboard that tells uh, people what the car is doing next, and there are different variations of that. That is one strategy, especially to uh, fight distrust so that people start to uh, know what the vehicle is doing. On the other hand, to prevent overtrust, there are concepts that are called reliability displays. For, for example, a status bar here tells the user how much the system thinks it is currently capable of. So if I have a very high value here, the car might be uh, pretty aware of what's happening. Well, when this bar is very low, I, as a user, I might have to monitor more. So the current state of automated driving research tells us now, uh, when we have to consider trust that is influenced by many, many things like interface aesthetics, risk behavior, other activities, and so on, we must consider the states and traits of the operator, we should increase the system transparency and let the driver see what the vehicle actually sees and feels to prevent distrust, but also provide feedback on the system's performance to, provide, uh, to prevent overtrust. And potentially what we also can do is we have to consider these users are very different, so we could also try to provide um, adaptive control interfaces that tailor themselves to a specific driver. So much uh, for the driving part, and now I hand over to Marisa again. Thank you. So Philip and I um, have kind of met through our trust research, but we realized we are working on different artifacts. So I am mostly working with conversational AI, and we were wondering, you know, what are uh, what are the differences? What's happening there? How are you working with the, the your research? How am I working, and so on? So I will talk a little bit about uh, the topic of conversational AI. And I want to start with a small movie. Hey babe, check this out. Alexa, it's game day. Streaming football on Prime Video. Closing blinds. Chilling rosé. Rosé? Well, it's an afternoon game. Mm. It's like she can read, read your mind. mind. Read your mind. I love that we get to sleep in. Mm. Ordering fresh mint mouthwash. Extra strength. I was thinking, I shouldn't get a spray tan, you know? Because that's on Wednesday. Activating blender. Funeral's on Monday. But what about the gold, Papa? Can't you see the treasure all along? It was here. Love the eye patch. It's... When is the show open? March 8th. Setting reminder to fake your own death on March 8th. Not, uh... What the f***? When you have to do those love scenes with hot guys, is that fun or is that like the worst? It's the worst. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scarlett, this bread is delicious. So good. Did you make it? Yes, uh, it's from my Gammy's recipe. Announcement. Gammy is short for she bought it at Whole Foods. Announcement. Colin left the oysters in the car for five hours. It's probably better Alexa can't read your mind. Bad idea. That's the game. Okay, so, um, yeah, so the thing with, where, wait, are we? Yo, Martha, I didn't know you was into this. You mean smoke? Okay, so the thing with conversational AI is, I mean, you're probably not gonna die from using it as with automated vehicles, so maybe uh, it's not that critical when you work with it. However, there may be some risks involved and overtrust may be as well a topic here in the sphere. And, but there's not so much um, we already do know, but just um, why is voice text a special case? Voice tech per se is quite intrusive because it lives in our most private spheres and you take him everywhere, it's very, very close. A big problem with conversational interfaces is also that GDPR and privacy things are very 
badly implemented. So they're really hard to access and you don't know how to work on them. Also, um, what has also been shown is based on uh, research on the social, social sciences, so based on anthropomorphism because humans have the tendency to humanize agents or they treat them as social actors, there is a high risk that people anthropomorphize and they, that they disclose more data that they should because they think, well, we're friends kind of thing. I'm overestimating, but there's a high risk that they disclose more than they should because of these um, biases or cognitive tendencies. And then last but not least, another topic um, that um, also uh, Dagmar and I are working on is that these kind of smart speakers are um, fostering paradoxical behavior. So basically, what does that mean? People think, people say privacy is important to them and they don't trust the system, but they still use it. And we kind of don't understand what kind of mechanisms are underlying here. And uh, another thing that we've been working on, and also um, Philip has mentioned already the work by Lee and Seam, the bigger, bigger problem with conversation and I, as well as also with cars, is we don't really know who the trust actors are. Are we talking about the speaker? Are we talking about Amazon, the company? Or are we talking about the developers who we are placing our trust in? So it's, it's really hard to distinguish the, the trust factors here. And um, as also, to mention it, um, if like uh, Philip has already um, mentioned that there are many trust definitions, we wanted to add that uh, the three um, pillars of trustworthiness, which are important to work on, I think this is a great, um, it's a great uh, possibility for if you want to work on specific features of a product, for example, you do want to look at least at these three pillars, which are performance, process, and purpose. So basically, in short, performance is one indicator of trustworthiness. It describes what the system actually does, how smart it is now if we're talking about conversational AI, for instance. Then process is the question of how uh, it comes to a decision. How does it work? Again, with conversational AI, especially with the commercial products, we don't know how they work. It's, it's, it's hidden. We have no idea. But um, how, how do we figure out, how do we think about um, these dimensions? And last but not least, the purpose dimension, which is why is this system built? Like, is, is it doing what we, it was intended to do? And these three dimensions kind of build um, up this picture of how do we perceive the trustworthiness of a system. And these three dimensions are what you want to think about uh, if you want to think about, okay, are we, what do we, are we looking at and how are we fostering trust, mistrust, or overtrust? And this could be one direction to go. Now, um, what we've been, we've been playing around a little bit with all the uh, conversational AIs available, for instance, um, what we've done, we invented some kind of um, intelligence test for conversational AI, where we wanted where we wanted to know how smart they are. In fact, we were testing other things, where, for instance, we wanted to know how do people react uh, or change a level of trust if they know what they are actually capable of. So we've asked uh, several questions. For instance, how much is 20% of $10? Okay, that's very easy. It's two. And then we change the question to see how does the behavior of the conversational AI change. And here you see, we asked how much is 20% of 10 shoes, which is a really weird question. And we wanted to know, okay, how do they react to it? And the interesting thing here is that the conversational AI answers in, with this might. So where we have clear um, indicators in the car with the reliability display and so on, with conversation, they're rather small. With this little word, they're indicating, I'm not so sure, so you might want to check. So this is a very tiny, small uh, mechanism to um, reduce overtrust in the answers of this kind of conversational AI. Now, why is this important? Um, we also do want to think about if we think about mitigation strategies to um, if we, to over to mitigate overtrust in AI, in automated systems, in automated vehicles, and so on. We want to think about okay, what are the vulnerabilities? We want to look at the vulnerabilities. This is this is the core of all trust strategies, of all trust theories, and um, so. 
just to, I just wrote down some things like what what are the vulnerabilities now from 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 human side? So what could be happening? What are the harmful outcomes? You cannot exercise meaningful agency. You cannot understand uh, the consequences. Oversharing, de-skilling. You rely too much on the answers, and so on and so on. So thinking about what kind of human vulnerabilities do we have, and also what kind of technical, technological vulnerabilities. Mostly as psycho psychologists, we look at the human vulnerability from trust research, but, um, so, but the technical vulnerabilities, uh, this is a well very well established in IT security that you look at these technical problems. And the fun thing about vulnerabilities is, especially with technical vulnerabilities, they only work with human vulnerabilities. So these two things always work together. Okay, so I think um, I'm just going to basically finish here, also to give you a quick and very brief introduction, since I guess most of you are probably not uh, very much in this topic, because um, before the others will talk about very more in detail, you can just go on from the human side, what is overtrust, what are we talking about when we talk about overtrust, is that the for instance, this relates to the belief of infallibility of machines, this automation bias that we always think that machines work 100% perfectly. There are other beliefs like there is no other option, I have to use it. Then there are other things like failure to monitor regularly. We don't ask too many what if questions. We think there are old, we rely on old safety checks and um, lack of understanding of decision makers. So who is taking the decisions and what kind of point. So this is just an, a brief overview to kind of give you uh, uh, the appetite, appetite for the next keynotes.